Rob has a 1971 Jeepster Commando. Very popular model. They've been used off-road. They've been made into project vehicles. They're beautiful when restored. This is the last Kaiser era Jeepster. Very popular body style. V6 engine is the 225 Buick, Dauntless V6. And Rob writes about his steering system. I have a 1971 Jeepster Commando, which I have labored restoring for the last year. It's in great shape minus the steering, which is a Ross box. I'd rather keep the Ross set up and not switch to Saginaw, which seems to be the preferred option for restoring Jeepsters. But I cannot find new boxes or rebuild kits for the one I have. Any suggestions? For openers, Rob, the raw steering gear can be rebuilt. I've rebuilt many of them. You'll find articles and even a slideshow on the magazine website about rebuilding the raw gear. One dilemma that you run into parts-wise with the V6 models, and this applies to both the CJs and also to the Jeepster, is that they have a very narrow spacing where the V6 engine crowds the steering gear. And as a result of that, Ross made the steering gear cases narrow and you have a shorter lever shaft on that application than you do on the models with a long shaft, the common pickup trucks, the CJ models, uh, and even back to the MB model. So the parts window narrows because of the short lever shaft. Assuming you can find the parts, and that would consist of the lever shaft because the pins are always worn, the bushings, and in the case of the narrow steering gear housing, you have different length bushings, a short bushing and a long bushing, which is not the case with the longer lever shaft applications of the Ross TL gear. So you need to source the bushings, you need to source a gasket for the cover, which is common. You need the bearings if necessary. I found that the bearings and races, especially offshore source parts, are not as good as the original Ross. And if your bearing races are in good condition, I would seriously consider reusing the bearing races with new chromium bearing quality bearings, which you can find from a bearing source. You'll need the lever shaft, generally the cam, unless there's been specific damage to it. The cam itself is okay on these Ross cam and lever gears. All of that information is in the rebuild articles at the magazine site and the slideshow that I described. So what it really comes down to is whether you want to keep the Jeepster pristine and original with the Ross gear, bell crank steering, if you're okay with the vehicle's handling, then that's a way to go. If on the other hand, this is a driver and the vehicle is going to be used maybe with other modifications that would detract from the collectability of a stone stock Jeepster, then I would seriously consider a Saginaw steering gear replacement. The Saginaw gear that is talked about most frequently is the recirculating ball and nut manual gear. You can also go to a Saginaw power gear if you want to put a power pump on the V6 engine, and I'm assuming you have a V6 and not a four-cylinder application, which would be very rare. The advantage of the Saginaw steering gear conversion is that that gear is much easier to turn. It's one of the smoothest designs ever. The Saginaw recirculating ball and nut gear goes back to 1940 with General Motors. It was a major breakthrough, patented, and has never been surpassed in terms of design for a fluid, easy to steer manual gear. And of course, there's the Saginaw rotary valve power steering, again unsurpassed with a recirculating ball and piston assembly. If you do convert to Saginaw, you have the steering column to contend with. You'll probably want to maintain the original steering wheel and upper column. You have the mounting of the steering gear, which requires welding. A kit is available from Advance Adapters for installing the Saginaw gear and also upgrading to a one-piece tie rod, which eliminates the bell crank and the two tie rod system. And on models equipped with a bell crank and two tie rods, it's a major improvement in terms of handling to go to the single-piece tie rod and a drag link from the steering pitman arm to the knuckle. Again, those parts are available from advanced adapters and have become very popular over the years due to the primitive nature of a Ross cam and lever gear compared to a Saginaw gear, due to the scarcity of parts and the steps involved in rebuilding a Ross cam and lever gear. And again, scarcity of parts is an issue. You also need a reamer for the bushings. See my articles before considering rebuilding the Ross gear. And if you can source parts, make sure that the parts for the Ross gear are not inferior offshore parts that will not equal the quality or deliver the service of the original equipment Ross pieces. The decision rests with you. If you do the modification to a Saginaw steering gear, yes, you have changed the chassis, you have modified and welded on the frame, 
and that is a consideration. If done properly, obviously you can have a safe and more modern steering system by using the Saginaw gear, but it really comes down to what your long-term goals are for that 1971 Jeepster Commando.